Fala galera, bem-vindos a mais um vídeo do canal Eu espero que vocês gostem muito desse vídeo porque foi muito especial pra mim Eu tive o grande prazer de entrevistar, né, de conversar com o Andy Morgan Que é o autor do livro sobre cutting Que eu falei pra vocês no meu vídeo, né, sobre 6 dicas de cutting Que o link eu vou deixar na descrição, o link do livro dele eu também vou deixar na descrição Porque eu ajudei na tradução desse livro, né Por isso que eu tive o prazer de fazer a entrevista, consegui esse contato é uma experiência muito legal pra mim Eu espero muito que vocês gostem E essa é a primeira parte Depois semana que vem eu solto a segunda parte Onde a gente entra um pouco mais a fundo sobre os detalhes da dieta e de coaching, tá Aqui é mais conhecendo o Andy Morgan, beleza Então é nóis Tamo junto, espero que vocês gostem. E não esquece de já deixar aquele like. Use o cupom de desconto CAIO10 para 10% de desconto em toda a loja. Show I start? Show sure, up to you. Um, and thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. And thank okay. you for the work that you're doing for us. Um, like me, Eric, Andrea, all of the 3DMJ team, Alan, Brad Schoenfeld, Brett Contreras, Krieger, all of the boys, everyone, like, they appreciate guys like yourself who step out of their um, comfort zone and who try and make a difference in their countries. Um to help people who cannot speak English and have access to the English speaking information. Um, so uh, like, please know that. And, and like, I appreciate this. So this is coming from me as well, but also like part of my journey has been, um, translating information and putting it out in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is kind of almost how I have a lot of my connections in the industry. It's certainly how I got a, um, I kind of feel that I have access to a level above, um, a friendship circle, a level above where I deserve. Um, and I put that down to the, um, the translations that, that we do. And I have an excuse to reach out to these guys yeah. and say hi. And then from there, it just spindled into friendships. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. thanks I... for the work you do, man. I, I appreciate you guys and your work, honestly, because most of the things I've learned uh, comes from you guys and all the work you put in into, like, writing blogs, writing articles, you know, writing books, um, and, and putting out the information that, you know, like, the market is so saturated with information, but you guys still believe that there is a better way maybe to teach it, to talk about it, and there, there are a lot of wrong information out there, too, that we should, like, try to not let fall into the wrong people's hands, you know, because it could lead to, you know, even health problems. We're dealing with health uh, of, of, of people in, in general. So, like, I really appreciate you guys and you guys giving me the opportunity to help with the translation and to do this interview because I think it's going to help a lot of people. Uh, and that's all, all we are about, right? So, that's right, man. I'm just going to introduce you a little bit and talk about yourself uh, for a second. So, guys... I'm interviewing right now Andy Morgan. Uh, maybe not all of you know who he is, but he's the author of the book I've been talking to you guys about. Uh, ex coach is calling it in English, uh, dieting and uh, the the last shred actually. The I last shred. It. Sorry, I was yeah. thinking Portuguese. Uh, yeah, fique desarado. Did yeah. I pronounce that right? Yeah, fique desarado, guia do definitivo do jejum intermitente. Um, so, Andy, uh. Just talk about you, like, uh, your age, your credentials, like, and your biggest accomplishment in this field of bodybuilding and health and fitness that you consider um, to be your biggest accomplishment. Sure, man. So, I'm Andy Morgan. Um, I'm 32. Um, I have zero credentials. None. Um, my biggest accomplishment... You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Um, everything I see as being incremental. Um, Monday, actually, was a cool day. Um, the English language web, website, ripbody.com, that reached uh, 10 million uh, clicks, wow. um, which was a big milestone. Wow. Um, and I noticed that our Japanese website, 
um, because I do something similar to you. Um, Mm -hmm. I translate information and put it out uh, in Japanese because I live in Japan. Um, That is about to reach 10 million clicks as well um, in the next five months. So um, I guess reaching out and being able to touch um, people um, through just writing good content because that hasn't been achieved with Google adverts or Facebook advertising or any kind of pushy stuff. It's just been through people reading the website and sharing it. Um, so I guess that's an achievement, but more than anything, I'm just grateful that people read my work and they, they share it. That's, that's awesome. So you have no credentials, no. Uh, but you still like have worked with thousands of people and they still like, uh, I know you're not an easy coach to work with. Like, it's not like, hey, I want to be Angel Morgan's client. You got to go to an application process. Uh, and I, I bet there are a lot of people that try to be your client. So what did you study? And, like, how do you know so much about dieting uh, that people just read your articles and, you know, they work your books and they're your clients and you can transform, transform people like you do? Um... Okay, so multiple parts for this one, yeah? Um, (laughs) I don't have any qualifications. Um, That is not the path I suggest you take. It's just for me to get qualifications living in Japan is um, quite difficult. Um, The other thing to remember is that um, qualifications are... They're a piece of paper and they prove that you have knowledge. But if you can prove that you have knowledge through your writing anyway, then people won't question whether you have qualifications. Nobody has asked me ever whether I have any qualifications. Um, No, sorry, client, coaching applicant has ever asked me whether I have uh, qualifications just because they know from reading my writing that I know my stuff. Um, Now, What I will say is, if I was living in England, I would have taken um, all kinds. Um, And the only reason I've been able to do this is because I'm just hungry to learn. So I can buy all of the textbooks and read them. And I can read um, the blogs and websites um, that I know you're a fan of Mm -hmm. and get the information from there and do self-study. Um, and when you're self-motivated and you really care about something, Mm -hmm. then, um, you can learn without these, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and, and to the point of why do people come to me? Um, I think it's because the website is just, it's a reflection of my personality. It's very, it's quite blunt. It's very, um, honest. Um, if people ask a question, I'll give them an answer. Um, if I think they're messing around, mm-hmm. um, then I'll tell them straight. And not many people are prepared to do that. And I'm fortunate that I get enough applicants so that I um, I can choose who I work with. Um, I can narrow down the niche of who I work with. And that means I can get very good at that niche. So that's 20 Generally, my average client is about 30 years old, is a successful professional. Um, he's a stud. He has every part of his life just nailed down, but he, he wants to get the nutrition and the training piece solved. He's already um, bodybuilding or powerlifting, but he wants to um, have this area of his life taken care of for him so that he can be more productive in other areas of his life. So for a lot of people, it makes a lot of sense to just hire a professional rather than try and learn it all themselves. Yeah, That's awesome. So for what I understood, you just read a lot. You bought the books yourself because I've heard of people that did that, you know, people that like even perform surgeries without actually having credentials and stuff. And I really admire people, and I totally agree with you when you say that 
actually you know a degree is just a piece of paper there are so and so many people with a degree in their hands that have no idea what they're talking about you know like you can go to classes and get C's you know and 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 cram every night to a test and do stuff like that but when you have a passion for something you're gonna be hungry you're gonna buy textbooks you're gonna be like reading the latest articles and try to always uh gather new information about it so that's that's really cool like that's what i'm all about and a lot of people that watch me are all about yeah and retain it because i studied finance at university i got a good grade mm -hmm. um i don't know anything about finance exactly. don't give me your money yeah. i don't know how to invest it i, I really like yeah. really but and, and i don't remember anything that i learned really but the nutrition and training stuff i read about it every day it's mm -hmm. what i do every day yeah. i love it that's all. So, you, you know, it just stays. I just, mm -hmm. yeah. And and uh, how how did you first of all? Uh, how did you end up in Japan? Because we know you're from England. Uh, and how did you end up like meeting these big names of the industry, like Eric Helms and stuff? Uh, so just tell me a little bit about that. Sure. So, um, um, if we go back a little way. Um, when I was 15, I got attacked in the street. Um, I had a bottle to my head, um, a glass bottle. Um, fortunately, it didn't smash, but it did cut my head open. Um, this was just a big gang of kids that wanted to fight. And it messed with my head because this was in my hometown. Um, my school was in a very bad area, so I was used to getting attacked. But this was where... This is my home, and um, it 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 uh, it really affected me badly. And um, my keyboard teacher, my piano teacher at the time, he said um, I should uh, come to karate with him. So I started doing karate, and then I enjoyed that. And then I realized actually, you know, the best defense is not punching someone in the face when you get attacked. It's not getting attacked in the first place. And not getting attacked comes down to confidence and how you carry yourself, but also size. I don't know the situation in Brazil. Um, mm -hmm. I can only say what I've experienced. Um, so I, I knew I was very tall, but very skinny. And I knew that I had to train and get bigger. Just so I didn't look like so much of a target. And I knew that if I had confidence within, then that would project out, and then I would be less of a target. So I started going to the gym, um, and I'm going to the gym for about five years. Um, I end up uh, traveling a lot at university, um, and then in my final year of university, I'm coming back from travels around Southeast Asia to do my final year, and all of my friends are getting very, very serious finance jobs. They're applying for finance jobs, and I can't do it. I just want to travel, so I decide that I'll spend a year and do uh, some karate in Japan, and uh, you know, because I wanted to travel and see the world a bit. Yeah. So I went to Japan and thought, right, I'll do the karate. A year turned into two, three. It's now been eleven years, okay. um, and that was because I found another uh, dojo that um, that was Aikido. Um, and the headquarters was 10 minutes south, bicycle ride from my house. Um, so I used to cycle there every day because mm -hmm. the, the, the world headquarters, so the best guys in the world would train there. And yeah. it was brilliant. And, um, and uh, I did that for five years, um, five, six years. And then um, the thing that got me into training more seriously is... I was in India, um, and I was on. The, I was traveling in India again, um, and I was on the beach. And basically, this girl said to me, "Hey, you know, you don't look like you train so much. <laughs> you don't look like you train as much as you do." And and she wasn't being nasty. She was just, you know, making a comment. But it was it was it was a kick in the balls, yeah. you know, um, because she was right. And so I wanted to figure out why that was. So I started going to a real proper bodybuilding gym. Um, and I just copied what they did. 
Um, I, yeah, which isn't the best way of doing yeah. things, but I just copied what they did. So I would go every day. Um, I would uh, train, yeah, so six days a week, because it was closed on a Sunday. I'd do like cardio, 30 minutes as well, on top mm-hmm. of that every day. Um, and, um, and I was eating three hours, every three hours, my protein. Gotcha. And it was hell, <laughs> but it, it worked. You've all been got, there, I think. Yeah, I got shredded <laughs> lean. And like, after about a year and a half, I discover, a f- I come across this uh, website called leangains.com. Right. This is Martin Birkin's website. Yeah. Um, and I came across this site because a friend of mine, Steve, he's in the gym and he's like, Oh, Andy. And he's, he's there. He's looking lean. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Whoa. And he goes Wah! and lifts up his shirt and reveals his abs. And like three months ago, he was a bit fat. And I'm like, Steve, what have you been doing? He's like, yeah, I've been eating pizza and, uh, I'm been eating twice a day, and this is brilliant. And I was like, "What?" <laughs> and he says, "Yeah, you need to go to go to leangains.com and uh, check out this intermittent fasting thing." And uh, <laughs> I was like, "Okay." So I went home and I read the whole thing. The next like 48 hours, I read everything on the site, oh, and then I went back and read all of the comments. And then I'm sat there, and I'm kind of in this rage. So what? I've been on a food hunt. Because mm-hmm. I felt like I'm on a food hunt, right? Trying to find protein every three hours yeah. um, for years because of industry lies. Mm-hmm. And then I decided I would try and do something about that. So I started the little website, um, and that turned into ripbody.com and athletebody.jp that we have today. That's I awesome. just wanted to help people. That is that is so cool. And how did you come about to like know Eric Helms and and those guys? Did they like meet you through your website, reach out to you, or you reach out to them? Um, yeah. Um, so I got to know them. So our Japanese website, we will translate some of my own work, and we'll translate some of. Um, the work of these guys, the guys that I look up to and respect. So you're including me in this group with Eric Helms and Alan Aragon. Um, I don't feel that I do not deserve to be included there. They are a level above me um, in the industry. And I made these connections because I reached out and said, hey, could we translate your information? Okay. I can't pay you because we put it out in Japan for free. Um, but I think it will help some people and I'd really appreciate it if we could. And all of them, all of them were like, yes, absolutely. That's awesome. So really that's step one. And then step two was I went to conferences. I would fly to conferences in the States, um, to go and meet them so we could have face to face relationships because you have to look someone in the eye. I do anyway, and know that they're a good person before doing any dealings with them. You know, mm-hmm. and I, I feel I feel that's important for me. So I felt it's probably important for them. And then this was five years ago, and those French those relationships have just turned into friendships now. Um, yeah, and I got lucky with um, Eric. Um, he saw he saw my book, The Last Shred. Um, say the name again for me in Portuguese. Um, uh, Fique sarado, alguém definitivo para dieta intermitente. So he saw that and he wanted to put out his books. Uh, he wanted to make his muscle and strength uh, training and muscle and strength nutrition pyramid YouTube series into books. And he saw that, he realized I could do a good job. He knew that we did a good job um, with his work in Japanese. And uh, he asked me to help him and Andrea put those together. So that's really where... Um, it kind of comes back around and where I've been able to uh, fit in. Well, I, I had no idea, so that's what I asked, and I think it's pretty interesting how how people just get connected, you know. Today is pretty much via social media, and I think that's a really big tool that we can use to reach to more and more people and just make connections in a community inside of it. Um, 
So now I just want to talk about you as a coach. Um, I just wanna, I just wanna ask, like, what made you become a coach? Like, um, what made you think, like, okay, now I'm good enough that I want to start working with people. I know I want to teach what I know to people, but like, you know, I think I, I have some good information here that I, I deserve to like be paid for, you know, remunerated for, for my job, and I can really help those people to reach their goals. Um, you know, and, and start doing that. Um, and just how long you've been you've been an online coach? Uh, it was an accident. I was writing. People started asking me. Okay. So there wasn't a specific point where I was like, "Okay, now I want to charge." Yeah. People started asking me for it. Oh, so, um, okay. The, I, I think a problem is if you want to get experience you will reach out and offer to your friends to help them mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. But if they don't pay you, they won't follow through. People need to have buy-in. There needs to be a commitment tool there. Um, and I was fortunate in that people would approach me because of my the quality of my writing, mm -hmm. which I look back on it now and I think it was terrible writing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was good enough for people to come and ask me for help. Um, I've been doing it for f five years now. Yeah, five years. Five years. And uh, five years, one month. And um, I was very fortunate when people started asking about helping them online. I hadn't even thought of that as a business model. But when I realized that that was a thing, I just jumped on it. And then I started working with it. And then I started talking about um, the systems I was developing, mm -hmm. and I just worked really hard. Um, and so I, uh, I was getting enough applicants so that I could um, quit my job within six months of starting that. And the job I had at the time was I was teaching English at high school, so it was a very comfortable job, mm -hmm. um, but I was making more than enough where I could quit. That. And when I say I had enough applicants, what I mean is I had enough applicants where I could select the people that I had a good feeling I could help. Because you don't, as a coach, you don't want to just take on anyone. You have to take on the people that you know you can help or mm -hmm. you're confident that you can. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise your reputation is just going to tank. Yeah. Um, you have to look at this for the long term. Mm -hmm. And I know that's, that's not an easy thing um, to turn down money at the start. Mm -hmm. but I believe it has to be done in many cases. Yeah. I, I mean, if you work hard enough, you know, and if you, if you work, like, if, you, if you're changing people's lives, it, it, it's more like the business. Like, you know, if you have one people, that, pe that person is going to tell their friends or family, you know, that's, that's my coach, that's the guy who helped me, and that's just going to spread. That's if your work is good and if you're working hard enough to, to make that happen. Uh, so I think that's very cool. Like you were able to quit your job, and I am assuming that's now your major source of income. Uh, yeah, so, I am. so, so that's incredible. Cause like that's that is what I want to do. You know, like that's my my goal to like be one of the, uh, let's say, not necessarily the best. You know, but like one of the best. Okay, I'm gonna say one of the best uh, coaches for natural bodybuilders uh, in Brazil. Not necessarily in Brazil, but for Brazilian natural bodybuilders, because I don't know if you know this or we have a talk about this, but uh, before my channel, natural the word natural bodybuilding in Brazil, it was just a tale, like it, it didn't exist. That 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 natural bodybuilding is not a thing for a lot of people, and, and it's impressive. You know, even people, uh, guys, 13, 14 years old, they think that for for you to have any kind of results in the gym, you have to take uh, you know, and performance enhancing drugs. You need right. to be on something, you know, because without that, like, you're just wasting your time and money at the gym. Uh, so I came around and I say, hey, I'm natural. I'm a bodybuilder. I do competitions. You know, that's the, this is how lean I got to my last competition. You know, I got a lot of hate at first, but after showing people, like, how commi committed I was to that and, you know, like, how knowledgeable, I mean... Honestly, looking back at that now, like, I didn't know anything, you know, but still, uh, for those people, I knew a lot. Um, and they were like, okay, so this guy, he kind of knows what he's talking about. 
uh, and then I today I have like my it's not the biggest channel but still I I get daily messages of people that are like you know I was gonna do steroids I had the drugs uh, I bought them you know I was ready for for that I was ready of like just quitting the gym because I didn't want to take stories and I wouldn't see any results but after seeing your channel like you just changed my mind and everything and that's that's just like the best feeling ever so that's yeah, dude, you've uh, saved yeah. people's lives yeah that, that, because these drugs they can kill yeah that's when I decided I wanted to to be a coach and reading your book I really enjoy the session when you talk about coaching and like what you should do what you shouldn't do you know like uh, and I just started like, you know, getting all these ideas, you know, like, oh, maybe, you know, when I get enough applicants, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to like choose, you know, the people that I know I can work with and I'm going to start like doing my Excel sheets and everything. <laughs> so that was pretty, it was pretty helpful. Uh, that, 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 that's the thing. All of the information that we talk about, um, if you do drugs, is it becomes kind of irrelevant because when you reach a plateau, the answer to the plateau, if you're taking drugs, is not, how can I get smarter about my training? It's, okay, how much more testosterone or what's my drug stack going to be? Okay. If you're trying to get leaner, again, it's not, how can I adjust my diet, which is everything in my world, mm -hmm. everything in, in, in how I coach, it, it becomes... What extra drugs can I take? So I will starve myself and then take these drugs so that I don't lose the muscle mass. Mm -hmm. And it's important to show people that you can do it um, without taking drugs. Of course, you cannot reach the same size, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that, um, like you said, they believe that they have to yeah. um, in order to make results, but that's just not true at all. Yeah, it, it, that blew my mind at first because I didn't know that people thought like that. But now talking about dieting, uh, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions because your book is pretty much about, you know, being shredded and how to do it naturally, how to like manipulate food and training and macros and everything. So in your opinion, and from working with all your clients, uh, what is the biggest dieting mistake you think that people generally do or like the most common one? So when someone thinks about, I'm going to diet, I'm going to lose some weight, what is the number one thing that you think they do wrong? Um, sure. So, uh, can we narrow this down? Who are we talking about now? Are we talking about a, a guy? He's a, he goes to the gym a lot. Um, he's been training hard. Um, he doesn't really know about diet. He takes his protein, but, and maybe some creatine and he, he's been training hard and it's February. Uh, no, sorry. It is, uh, it's August. And he wants to diet down for uh, for uh, Brazilian summer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and so he he now decides to he's now looking to start his diet, right? Mm -hmm. So because there's all different categories of like uh, of people and the mistakes that they make. Yeah. But the the guys that I work with, the guys that you work with, mm -hmm. um, like this is the guy. So what does he do? He probably goes to a website like mine um, and he will find a calculator to help calculate his um, calorie intake that he needs and the, um, the calorie deficit that he needs and how much protein, carbohydrates and fat he needs. Right? He does that. He starts tracking his food intake for the first time and he thinks that this is going to get him from where he is now to shredded lean, right? Mm, yeah. And he doesn't realize that he's going to have to make adjustments to his diet as he progresses to keep himself progressing. And so he doesn't track his weight properly. He doesn't measure his body. Um, he's not um, listing this up week by week, um, it's just going by the mirror. And then so when it comes to whether you are stalled or not, um, you don't have the objective data to go on. You just wake up, look in the mirror, oh, I'm a little bit, okay, let's cut some carbs. Mm -hmm. 
becomes the, the issue that a lot of people have. Whereas if they have the body measurements, if they have the scale weight averaged at the end of each week so that they can see exactly what has or hasn't happened, then they know how they can uh, make adjustments. Then they know whether they need to make adjustments and then they can decide how much of an adjustment they can make. And that's what it's all about because you want to get shredded in the most sustainable way possible so that you can stay there once you are shredded. And by shredded, I mean around anywhere between 8 to 10% body fat, right? Mm -hmm. If you have some good muscle mass, then this is looking peeled. Yeah. Just to clarify, nobody can stay at um, stage weight where they're like 4 or 5%. That's just impossible. Yeah. But you can <laughs> stay... Most people can stay between 8 to 11, 8 to 12 percent comfortably as long as they get there in the right way. But so many people, they just slash their calories um, and they don't track what they've been eating and they get stuck at the end. Or if they do get to where they want, they just rebound and they put all that fat back on really quickly. They get depressed. They maybe seek drugs or they quit. They're like, eh, this bodybuilding is not for me. I think, and that's sad. Yeah, I, I, I think the biggest issue there, like you were saying, uh, they rebound is because they don't don't have adherence. They they they, they didn't develop their adherence to their diet, uh, right? Because well, you're not gonna be able to adhere or to do a diet that you're just like slashing calories from one day to another, like. Like I say, quitting carbs, cold turkey, um, because just not not optimal. Your body doesn't want to do that. You you it's not gonna work. Um, so why do you? How do you work with clients on like? What do you advise a person to do to make a diet last the longest, or for them to adhere to the diet in the best possible way? Um. So um, when I set up someone's diet, um. So I'll give them their macro targets. I will give them the range for which I want them to hit those macro targets. Um, and the range will depend on who they are, how advanced they are, and how much body fat they're carrying. Um, so if a guy is already very lean and he's looking to get beach shredded lean, um, he needs to have a higher level of adherence than a guy who's say sitting at 25% body fat and he just needs to lose um, 15 kilos um, his uh, his level um, his range of acceptable adherence is going to have far more um, leeway there um, and sorry this, the, sec the second part of the question yeah uh, I, I asked like how would you make a client adhere to the diet, make their diet last the longest. Okay, yeah, so it by making the fewest reductions as possible. So we have to balance motivation from seeing results with the pain and suffering of dieting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I say pain and suffering because most people think it should be pain and suffering, but really mm -hmm. we want to have this here yeah. while still seeing results. And this means keeping calories as high as possible for as long as possible. So I'm looking for any sign of progress, not one sign that we're not progressing. So what I mean is some people, they will see that either this week the scale didn't move or I don't look leaner or my stomach measurement hasn't gone down and they will use that information to make the excuse to cut their calorie intake. In my opinion, that's wrong. What you do is you have a look at the trend over the last four weeks so that you're not a victim to um, minor fluctuations in water weight. Mm -hmm. You then look to see if you have reduced stomach measurements or your scale weight has gone down or you're looking leaner and if any one of these is true, then you do not adjust. Okay. Assuming that you're on track with your target. Yeah. Because a lot of people do believe that progress is a nearly linear, but it's really not, right? Uh -huh. 
No, no, no. It's it's so um, so for how you're looking at it, it's mm-hmm. it's gonna be like this. Yeah, ups Sometimes and downs. Like that, and then boom. Ups and downs, but over time, it's just downward. You know exactly, like, and and that's why taking scale weight as an average scale weight each day, and then taking the average at the end of the week, mm-hmm. and then plotting it over weeks, and then comparing is essential. Yeah, yeah. There are so many factors that go into uh, losing weight. You know, like you said, uh, the glycogen and water holding, and they're just uh, you can be bloated by hormones, cortisol stress you know and all this 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 kind of stuff and it's not like i mean i remember when i was in prep uh, i'll get frustrated on myself you know because one or two weeks i was the same weight but you know guess what next day next week uh, i was like a pound lighter and then i kept that you know uh average of that pound lighter for another week and then it decreased a little bit um and it just goes like that. It doesn't mean that every single day I'm going to be 0.01 pound lighter or, you know, like every single week I'm going to be this much lighter. And still you got all those other factors like body weight measurements, uh, not body weight measurements, just body measurements and uh, looking in the mirror, but looking in the mirror is still not the yeah, best I, option. I, I get clients to use photos um, mm-hmm. with the same lighting because... Looking in the mirror, you've got different angles you can get in your own head. Mm-hmm. Um, photos, um, you've, you've, we've all seen photos of ourselves. Oh, yeah. And we're like, oh, I look like that? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's different. Because we can look at ourselves and see what we want to see in the mirror, kind of. Yeah. But photos yeah. don't lie. I, I totally, yeah. yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, and honestly, you know, I think that Everything you've been you're saying here is very helpful, and it, it is in your book. Like I, I read it, and it was so nice because like I read that book in a day, you know. Because I'm like, okay, let's do this, and, and it's not easy because I had to read it twice. Every every single paragraph I read, I read in English, then in Portuguese, and compare, uh, and see how things were. But still, it was really interesting the way you explain everything, and like honestly. Uh, sometimes we think, oh, I already know this. I started reading your book thinking that I would know most of it, you know. But it's still, I learn stuff new. And just like that reinforcement of that information in your mind or just looking from a different perspective, it makes you think for a second. Uh, you know, like, honestly, before a book, I was uh, the guy, that guy that would just like uh, take body, just take your body weight, you know, uh, 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 weigh yourself in the morning. Put in an Excel sheet, take the average for the, for the, for the week, and then looking myself in the mirror, right? Uh, I never once thought about taking body measurements, you know, and and when you explain about everything, I'm like, whoa, I should start doing that, you know, maybe next prep because it is you go you 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 it gets in your mind because when you're depleted like that, you know, uh, in that state of like uh, deep in, into prep. If your if your scale like if the number on that scale doesn't move from a week to another, you just you, you're gonna get in your head. You're gonna get more stress. You might w- hold more water, so it's just not good. So yeah, I recommend yep. it. I think it's good. And that's right. And the other thing um, that's really like my job is stopping people from um, making stupid decisions which are generally cut calories cut calories cut calories Mm -hmm. if i if i have the measurements i can say well look your scale weight didn't move but your stomach measurements your lower stomach measurement has gone down and they're like oh but i don't look any leaner and i'm like yeah but there's fat on your back down by your lower obliques that you're not thinking of that's Mm -hmm. coming off yeah. And that's where it becomes so important because that lack of scale weight change could be some water retention. It could be gut content. It could be that, say, they had some saltier food that week. Mm-hmm. Sometimes even the scale. It could be that they gain muscle. Yeah, and, some, <laughs> you know? and sometimes even the, in my case, sometimes the scale was not really uh, regulated. So uh, I would step in once in the morning and the weight would just be like two pounds uh, uh, heavier, and then I would just get off the scale, step it on again, and then it would adjust and get to the regular weight. So 
it, it, we gotta remember is also like it's a machine you know even like if you're weighing yourself in the bathroom and then you put your scale like in your room depends it, you don't know like um in my my friend's house his room the floor it wasn't that sturdy i guess i don't know so when i would i would step on the scale i would be much lighter than i actually was you know because the floor would just come down a little you know with it uh so yeah it's funny